hey, you can now record your iPhone and iPad screen without a jailbreak. I'm going to show you how on this next episode. Hi everyone, welcome to my Apple Podcast. My name is Tim Brown. For this episode, I'm going to cover an application that enables you to record your iPhone and iPad screen without having to use a third-party device like a computer and or the Reflection app to do it. Before I show you all the cool features associated with this application, let's go into some Mac news a little bit. So there's some interesting things going on in the Apple news world these days. There was a recent article that came out in the New York Times by David Siegel that addressed this issue of Apple employees making as little as $11.25 an hour compared to how much money the company makes, found that to be a huge disparity. Uh, the article is quite long and I haven't had a chance to read the whole thing. Uh, it starts out with uh, one employee who had confessed, I believe the employee was living in New Hampshire sold about $750,000 worth of computer hardware and who was only making eleven twenty-five an hour. I don't know, what do you think of this news story? Uh, is there some truth to it? Do you think there's a problem with it? Are there some things that are missing in the story that aren't being covered properly? What is your opinion? I would like to know. Also, what came up in the news recently is Apple's anticipated iOS 6. Apparently, like the last release, when they released the app for iTunes University, well, this time they're going to do the same thing. Only thing they're going to do this strictly for podcasts. And this will be fantastic for folks like us who like to listen to podcasts and produce podcasts. There's also a rumor that this application will have some functionality built into it that will actually enable you to actually create podcasts as well. Now, I don't know how much truth there is to that, but if there is any truth to it, I sure am looking forward to it. Okay, let's get on to the app review. Okay, the application that I want to feature for this episode is called Display Recorder by Boogin Software Company Limited. The application is $1.99. It's made for the iPhone and iPad and enables you to record your screen. Now, if you wanted to do this before, you know that Apple has not allowed anyone to do this up until this point. So... This is a very exciting development, and we're hoping to see more. There are a few bugs with this application, but overall, it performs a pretty good job. And I'm going to share. I'm going to share with you some of the features. What you're looking at here right now is an example of how it works on the iPhone 4S. And I decided to do a screen capture of Flipboard. And I'm just going through and just highlighting all the features that are on Flipboard, just so you can see how well the application captures the online activity. For the most part, it's pretty good. What I discovered as I was experimenting with both devices, that is the iPhone and the iPad, is that it performs much better on the iPhone. I'm not quite sure why, but it does, at least on the iPhone 4S. You have two options when you're recording. You can choose to record using the direct access option, or you can choose to record using screen capture. What I discovered is that screen capture is the best option because it enables you to record audio and video and get the full recording. Direct access tends to fail mainly because it requires recording the system audio which prevents the actual video from showing up so you'll get a blank screen or a black screen. And so it's rarely successful when using that mode. Now it does work when you use it to record a screen without audio and you have the option to turn the audio off and that's when it works but for the most part if you want to get audio and video you want to use the option screen capture and this works well on the iPhone 4S as, as you can see here I'm showing some highlights of the new, relatively new application that I really enjoy and maybe I'll do a review one day is Air Mail and here, as you can see, it's able to capture everything that's going on, and the sound is pretty good. However, when I tried to do the same thing on the iPad, it did not turn out very well. Uh, when the new screen capture even says in the directions that 
screen capture is slower than direct access. Now, screen capture is the, the most reliable way to record your screen, but it's not the best way. And while it performs great on the iPhone, on the iPad you will get considerable lag. At least that was my experience when I had the latest iPad. You get a lot of lag and you cannot court, record audio very well. So I really haven't had much success on the iPad using this app with the exception of using screen capture and not relying so much on audio. In this case, I recorded Flipboard on the iPad and I actually used direct access but turned audio off. And the recording turned out fairly well. You can even see the flipping motions of the pages. There's a little lag as you can see but for the most part it turned out pretty good. So overall, I would say I would give the application a 4 because it does a fabulous job at recording the activity on your screen. There are just some bugs that need to be worked through, particularly with the iPad, before it's top notch. Overall, I think this application is great. It's $1.99. I would encourage you to pick it up. It really works well. Well, thank you very much for tuning in to this episode of My Apple Podcast. My name is Tim Brown. You can reach me at myapplepodcast at gmail.com if you have any questions or comments, or you can leave comments on the website at www.myapplepodcast.com. Anyway, I hope to see you next time.